Another week has gone by, which means it's time for another afternoon with the coach. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the West Miller Show, presented by the UNCG Alumni Association. I'm Luke Martin, alongside the coach, West Miller. And, Coach, it's always great to see you. I know this is a busy week for you, especially when uh, you have to deal with the talented High Point Club on Wednesday night. Sure, you know, talented High Point Club, they're having a great year. Uh, you know, I think when you think about uh, what Scott's done there, uh, over the last couple of years, he, he's really built the program. I was there for the beginning of that, so it's cool to see what's developed uh, over time here. And then John Brown's at the center at everything they do. I mean, uh, one of the best players in college basketball. He's been there four years and made a big impact on their program. And uh, he's a senior now, and guys are better as seniors usually than they are as juniors, sophomores, and freshmen. Uh, he was pretty dang good as a freshman. We played against him, so he's he's a great player, and, and a lot uh, goes through him. Um, but it's not just high point this week. We have finals going on, and guys finishing up academically, and, and we're trying to to make some adjustments and things because we got to get a little bit better. So a lot going on here, but uh, we're working and, and working to improve. You know, we'll get into the high point game in the second half of the show, Coach. But let's focus on the lone game a week ago against North Carolina A and T. And you told me on the show last week after the Jacksonville game, you told your guys, "Look, this is going to be a different environment. It's going to be a tough game. It's going to be on the road." Uh, knowing that, that's when A and T kind of was able to separate themselves early in that first half. What did you feel was one of the differences, or some of the differences, where A and T was able to go on their run and kind of build some separation early in that game? Well, first you got to give A&T a lot of credit. They came out ready to play. Uh, they shot the ball well. They were into it defensively. Um, I thought that early foul trouble frustrated us. Uh, I didn't think we handled that well. Uh, there were some lineups out there that we've never practiced with. You know, I, uh, we had it felt like uh, all of our key players in foul trouble in the first six, seven minutes of the game. But that's adversity, and we have practiced how to deal with adversity, and we, we needed to handle that a little bit better. So the first half we were out of sync. <clears throat> A&T was terrific. And we struggled to react the right way. I did think we came out and played a good second half. I thought we came in more focused. I thought we competed a little bit better. And we gave ourselves a chance to get back in the game. I mean, I think there's a stretch there in the second half where we get it down to eight. And we proceed to miss five straight free throws at the free throw line. So we had plenty of chances. And it's felt like that in all our games. You know, whether we've had success or haven't, we put ourselves in position to win in the set late in the second half. And we just got to continue to get over that hump of doing all the details and little things uh, that you have to do to win Division One college basketball games. You know, Coach, to piggyback off of what you said, you mentioned we practice adversity. What are some things you do in practice to help your team to work when that does happen, when guys get in foul trouble and you need to practice that adversity? What are some ways you prepare your guys for that adversity in games? Oh, we talk about it every every day. I mean, we, toughness, the word toughness sits on our wall in our practice facility, and we talk about real toughness, you know, not just the macho stuff, not just the physical toughness, but the mental toughness. And we try to create adversity as coaches. Uh, we try to create a lot of competition in practice. When you have a lot of competition, you're going to have adverse moments. And then we always try to address how do we respond in those moments. It's, it's a daily emphasis. We emphasize those things all the time. We didn't do a good job of that in the first half, but we pointed it out at halftime, and I thought they really did respond in the second half and, and played a better half, even though we weren't able to get on the other side of the game. You mentioned that response in the second half, and a big part of that was R.J. White uh, scoring 14 straight points for you guys from the end of the first half to the beginning of the second half. What allowed R.J. to have that success there late in the first half, early second? Well, what do you think also contributed to maybe not being able to continue that for the rest of the game? Yeah, well, one of the keys to the game offensively, they're a tricky team defensively. They, they do some strange things and uh, some unorthodox things, and we, we knew that going into the game. And one of the things that we stressed was let's not overthink it. Let's get the ball inside by dribble or pass, and then let's hit the open guy. You know, let's, let's keep basketball really simple. Um, in the first half, we didn't do that. We got the ball inside and then made terrible decisions. Uh, in the second half, we talked about it at halftime. Let's get back to what we talked about in our game plan. Let's get the ball inside, and then let's have five guys playing together and make good decisions. We got it into R.J. early in the second half. He took his time. We had good action on the backside, and he made some plays, and that really got him going. Uh, again, I think that's the team that we got to be all the time. We got to be able to get the ball inside by dribble or pass, and then we got to be under control and make good decisions and play team basketball. And, and we saw that a little bit in the second half, and that got us going on the offensive end. And the final note on the A and T game, coach, was Francis Alonzo and the career high he. He had 25 points, but he also had a career high in assists. He had five assists in the game. He only had five 
total on the year heading into the game. What did you like from Francis in the A&T game, and what can he do to build on that and continue this performance for the rest of the year and, and then into, into high point on Wednesday night? Yeah, I mean, I think we've been excited about Francis since he committed here last spring. I mean, we think he's going to be terrific. He's already doing some terrific things. He may be in a bigger role than I think we ever anticipated with some of the things that have happened here in the preseason. And then, you know, Clay Bird's out with a concussion for God knows how long now, but he hasn't even been able to practice. So Francis, who's playing a huge role, even plays a bigger role, and I think he responded really well. Uh, we're really excited about the player that he's going to be. The quicker we can get him to not make some of those freshman mistakes, though, and, and continue to do the great things that he is doing, the better that we're going to be as a team. But uh, he's, he's having a terrific start to his freshman year, and I think he'll only improve. Well, we've reached the first break in the show, and the man we were just talking about, Francis Alonzo, he joins the show right after this short break, so don't go away. Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. To sell your home on time for the most money, you need a sharp agent with a marketing strategy that creates the most demand. Bottom line, you need a partner willing to put their own money on the line for you. In Greensboro and Winston-Salem, it would be Jason Bramblett. He attracts hundreds of buyers and creates so much demand that Jason can guarantee if your home doesn't sell at a price and deadline you agree to, he will buy it. Partner with the agent I trust. Go online or call and get your home sold. Team looming, he'll kick it out, Alonzo, three, good! Alonzo hoist a three, good! And back pedals the other way. Bench erupts and Alonzo with another big three. And welcome back to the West Miller Show presented by the UNCG Alumni Association. And now it's time to welcome in a guy. We have to wait to get him on the show because he's just been steaming on the floor, red hot on the floor, shooting from downtown. That is, of course, Francis Alonzo. And Francis, it's great to have you on the show, my friend. And uh, it's been a great start to the year for you. How are you feeling right now with your first year here at the G? Well, yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy about it. Uh, coaches and players are giving me a lot of confidence and – that's I really appreciate it because uh, as a freshman, uh, it's supposed to have like a, a tough year, uh, but mine is getting better and better. So I appreciate it. What's been the key to your success so far? You talked about your teammates helping you out and bringing you along. Uh, from you, from the success on the floor, what's been the key to that early on? Here? Well, this is I think a new year for me, so uh, I have to be uh, really uh, focused on practice. Uh, trying to learn everything uh, as quick as I can because uh, I'm a foreign and well language is kind of difficult you know but well I think I'm getting better uh, how I say my coach is giving confidence uh, to the core and give me some minutes to to show that and well I'm feeling better every game and every practice and uh, we gotta keep it up yeah what do you feel is the biggest learning curve for you I mean you mentioned you're not from here mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> this is all new for you uh, but for you, what is that biggest learning curve or what's been the biggest learning adjustment? Well, it's, uh, it's a lot of, uh, I mean, there are a lot of things uh, really different from Spain to here, but I think the kind of, the style of play, the style of practice is really different. In Spain is more like a strategy, you know, and here you gotta, you gotta run, you gotta uh, be focused while you're running. Uh, it's a lot of different things but uh, the style of play you gotta be more focused i think yeah well despite those differences you've had a great start to this year like i've talked about uh but also you've had a special visitor uh, that's been watching yeah. you uh the yeah. past week uh tell us who that special visitor is yeah it has been a great surprise my father and well another guy is like a friend of mine, really good friend considered my family manolo my father well, uh, coach miller on saturday next week no last week i think he told me, no, I got to meet you. We're going to talk. And then uh, I went to coffee, t the coffee shop uh, down the street. And, well, my father was there trying behind, <laughs> behind him from, from a tree, behind for a tree. Oh, well, it was great. Like, uh, uh, I, didn't, I didn't have any clue about it. So it has been a really good surprise and a really great time with them. Yeah. Obviously, it's been hard because you don't get to see your parents yeah. a lot. Um, but what did it mean? Uh, to see your dad, uh, especially coming from a surprise by you when you had no idea that you were going to see him. It means so much. I mean, uh, see him on the court, uh, on the crowd while I was playing or, or practicing, then have the chance to meet my, my teammates and my coaches. Uh, it has been great. I mean, it's like a dream, you know. Uh, I was waiting to February, I think they're gonna, they were about to come here. 
and it, it has been soon, you know, like uh, I've been playing, I've been uh, one game away or two at home and they were there and well, uh, watching him on the crowd and cheer, him, cheer us up, you know, it has been, it has been a, a great experience for me, yeah. And maybe that had something to do with getting your uh, career high against yeah, North yeah. Carolina. <laughs> 25 points. What's the key for you to keeping that same level? Uh, of course, we'd love to see you score 25 points every game the rest of the way. But to use that as a springboard for you to continue improvement, but also for you guys as a team to use that game as a motivating tool moving forward. Well, I think uh, uh, many games, uh, a lot of different players. I don't know, last game was me. But maybe next game it's not gonna be me. It's maybe it's KL, maybe it's Marvin, maybe it's another player. So we need to be focused and we need to give everything. I think we have a lot of details to fix, but we are competing every game. So we have to be f we have to be proud and happy of, uh, uh, about it, you know, because it's on us. So we just need to keep it up and keep going and move on, you know. And it all starts with high point this week. The Spartans. Look to get a huge win against another team here in the triad area. Francis, we appreciate the time. Like I said, we can start banking on you scoring 25 points a game, right? Uh, I think it'll, that's be good. Be it'll be good. <laughs> it'll be good. I'm more if we win. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Francis, thanks for the time, my friend. Thank you. Thank Once again, that was Francis Alonzo. We got more coming up here on the West Miller Show, so don't go away. Add big flavor to your next get-together with Subway Catering. Featuring good-to-go boxed meals with a side and freshly baked cookie, crowd-pleasing giant subs, and piled-high sandwich platters overflowing with flavorific choices. All made the way you say with everything you love, like jalapenos and chipotle southwest sauce. Subway Catering is simple and satisfying, a great value for any budget. Just call 877-360-CATER or visit Subway.com and let us take care of any occasion. Subway, cater fresh. Welcome back to the West Miller Show, presented by the UNCG Alumni Association. And Coach, we just had Francis on, and he was telling us the story about how you and the team were able to surprise him with his dad uh, coming here and surprising him here in Greensboro. Uh, how hard was it to keep that a secret from Francis, and kind of how long was this story uh, story in the works? Well, his, his, his dad said he was coming into town uh, maybe a month before. Um, and he said, don't tell Francis we want to surprise him. And he had a, a good family friend with him as well. Uh, and so that, that wasn't hard for me. I mean, I, I do what I'm told type of thing. You know, I'm used to that at home. I, my wife tells me don't do something. I don't do it, you know, and, and his dad said that. So we, uh, you know, we, we didn't tell him. I told Francis to meet me at Tate Street Coffee for, for coffee at 11 o'clock on Saturday morning, last Saturday morning, and little did he know he was going to run into his old man there, and he was so fired up. I think it's, it's different when you're uh, across the water, you know, and, and he's, it's so hard for him to see his family because they're all the way in Spain. So I think it's a little extra special uh, when guys like him and Jordy get a chance to spend time with their families here or over there because they don't get that opportunity like the rest of our guys. So I think it was a special moment for him, and I know he was thrilled to have family in town. And, you know, Coach, and during the year you obviously get caught up working, focusing on basketball and what you guys can do on the floor. But how neat is it for you to see a moment like that take place, to almost be a reminder of – well, this is why you coach is to see moments like that and to see an impact of Francis when his dad comes back to see him. Sure, it's special. You know, and I'd had the opportunity to go over to Malaga, Spain and meet his family. And what a special family and great people. Uh, and so it was it was really neat to – I've interacted with them, but I hadn't interacted with them around Francis. Because when I went there, Francis was here in high school. So um, it was really neat to see them together. And that is what it's about. I mean, it's – we're, we're coaching young people. This isn't professional sports. It feels like that sometimes. Uh, of course, we take it that seriously, but we're coaching young people, and, and, and there's an extra side to that that's special and important, and those kind of moments do remind you that, Luke. Well, now let's focus on Wednesday night against High Point. We talked to him about earlier in the show John Brown and what he can do, but they are much more than just John Brown. This is a very talented team. From what you know of High Point, you know, because they're in the area, what impresses you most about them as a basketball squad? Well, I, you know, they they have upperclassmen. And then obviously, like we said, it starts around John Brown. But they got upperclassmen that know how to play, that have won a lot of games. They've had tremendous success over the last couple seasons. Um, and so when you watch them on tape, they look so secure in who they are as players and who they are as a team. You know, they're so secure in their roles from top to bottom. I mean, everybody knows John Brown's the guy. And so a lot of things are built around him. But the other guys do what they do really, really well. Uh, Lindauer is a terrific guard for him. I was watching him 
uh, on tape last night, and I've seen his progression from freshman to sophomore, sophomore to junior, and you can just see he started to settle into who he is as a player. He shoots it well. He makes great decisions. He plays well in the things that they do. Um, you know, the, the same thing for a number of their guys. They've just developed. Adam Weary a terrific guard that's played a lot of minutes for him. Cugini's a, a step out four man who can really shoot the three, who could always shoot the three, but he's doing so many more things. I mean, their personnel is really secure. They have a really strong identity. And then again, it all does come back to one of the best players in college basketball this year in John Brown, and, and they do a great job of playing around him. What specifically about John Brown keeps a coach like you from getting a lot of sleep? That's a great question, Luke. And we'll talk about this a lot with our guys. You know, he's going to make some spectacular plays and he's going to hit some tough shots. Those aren't the ones that'll bother us. He's a great player because he gets so many easy ones. You know, he out the, – the kid is really special because he outworks people. I mean, you know, you think about, uh, you know, players that are great players, how many times the first thing you say about him is they just play harder than everybody else. I mean, that's what makes him special. He plays harder than everybody on the floor, and because of that, he finds himself around the ball a lot. He gets, you know, more points just by going to the offensive glass or being in the right place at the right time because he plays so darn hard and he's so active. And you can say the same thing about the way he rebounds the ball. So you look at his numbers, well, the guy shoots an unbelievable percentage. He rebounds the heck out of the basketball, okay, and, and, he, and he, he has high, high rebounds, high points, high percentages. It's just because he plays harder than everybody. And then everybody looks at the two or three spectacular plays and go, oh, he's unbelievable. That's just a small part of who he is as a player. We can't let him out-effort us, and we can't let him get the easy ones on the offensive glass and around the basket. That's what we're going to have to do to have success. I know you've just, you just touched on it a moment ago, but what's the message to your guys this week in practice as you prepare for Wednesday of some of the things you really want to see your team focus on once the ball is tipped uh, come Wednesday night? Well, I just want us to play together. Uh, I want us to continue to focus a little bit better. Uh, effort's a big thing. we got to play with tremendous effort. Uh, this team's gonna, got a chance to be very good. But if we don't play with tremendous effort, we won't be. I want to see that first. I want to see our togetherness second. And I want to see us play together. You know, I think we are together. But I want to see us play together basketball, connected basketball defensively, uh, connected basketball offensively, sharing the ball, working to get great shots, working to get it inside and make good decisions. Um, and then we got to be better on the backboards if we're going to be successful. We're not rebounding very many of our misses. And we're missing enough that we have plenty of opportunities. So uh, we just got to try to put it together. And I, I think – if we continue to build each and every day in practice, it's going to come together in games, and, and it'd be nice to get healthy too, Luke. You know, I, it just feels feels like every week it's something, and um, instead of getting down about that, I think you just keep pushing, and then it is going to come together, and it's going to feel pretty good when it does. But we'd like to have Jordy back out there. We'd like to have Clay back out there, and we'd like to keep these other guys heading in the right direction too. Well, no doubt it is going to come together, and hopefully it is going to be Wednesday night against High Point. We encourage all UNCG faithful to make that trip here in the triad area and go support Coach Miller and the Spartans. Coach? It's always great to catch up with you. Appreciate the time, and we'll catch up next week. Thanks, Luke. Once again, that was the coach, Wes Miller. For everybody in Spartan Athletics, we'll talk to you next week.